Okay, today I'm going to go over the edit of a green heron photo here that I took recently. Uh, so it was a little bit far away, so I'm going to crop in just a touch. Straighten it out a little bit. And I'm going to leave it with a little bit of space, because I usually tend to like that. So maybe something like that looks pretty good for the crop. Yeah. Uh, it's a little underexposed, so lighten it up a touch. Bring the highlights down, shadows up. Add the blacks back down, bring some contrast back into it. Uh, warm it up a little bit. A little too far there. And maybe just a touch of saturation. A little less magenta. Something like that looks good. I think I'm going to offset it a little bit more as well. Kind of leave more space out in front of the bird. And maybe just punch up the light areas a touch. Still looks a little magenta, so I'll uh, add some green to it. And that looks like a good starting point. So from here into Photoshop. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do is add a blank layer. Let me bring the palettes back onto this screen so you can see it. There we go. So blank layer. And just use the cloning tool to get rid of some of this weirdness there. Let's check out everything else. A little bit of a bright spot there I'll get rid of. And there, looks good. All right, so merge that down. Now I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer. And for this one, I'm gonna actually darken it and lessen the contrast a bit. The goal here being to darken the background and make the bird and this tadpole stand out a little bit more. Uh, so with just a regular paintbrush now, I'm going to oops, uh, take that effect off of the bird and the tadpole. So this is going to be a little time consuming here. So if you get bored of watching this, feel free to fast forward a bit. But if you want to see how I do it, I usually start zoomed in pretty heavy here and then just click along with the brush, kind of outline everything and get real precise. And what can happen here is if I go too far that way, just switch to white again and fix it like that. The nice thing I like using uh, brushes and masks like this versus say the lasso tool or any other selection tool is I can control the hardness of the brush. So I can actually use a softer brush or a harder brush depending on how precise the edge is. So for instance, this feathered edge here, I'm actually gonna soften the brush up a little bit as I paint along there. And then I'll go back to the harder brush for the legs, which are pretty sharp and precise here. I think I'll leave the stick dark, because I actually kind of like that being a little darker there. And then there's also the reflection in the water that I'm going to have to deal with, but that seems pretty soft, so I'm just going to use a real big soft brush on that. If at all, I might just leave the reflection kind of dark. We'll see what looks natural when we're done here. Almost done outlining. And once I get the full complete outline cut out, I'll show you real quick how I fill that in. So there we go. So option click the layer mask, it actually shows the outline that I just painted, magic wand, expand that selection just a little bit, and then fill it. And there we go, now I can check and make sure I have everything filled in, there's no missing spots. And there is a missing spot right here. There we go. So, now I can see I really darkened that background significantly, and the bird already is kind of standing out more. That might be a bit much, so I might lower the opacity on that a little bit, but now actually the bird seems a little dark to me in general, so I am going to do another curves adjustment layer, 
to actually lighten the bird up and the overall scene. But now, since I have that selection, I'm just going to load that back up and then get rid of some of that lightning on the background here. So it's mainly just affecting the bird. <clears throat> Overall, maybe take a little blue out, kind of add a little yellow, warm the scene up. And I think I still want to go a touch lighter with everything. So we'll do that. Still seeing a lot of like uh, magenta tones in the top of the bird there, especially in the, the wings in the back. So yet another curves adjustment layer. Uh, just kind of take some of those magenta hues out and kind of green up this background. I really like how green everything is. So maybe just kind of enhancing that is a good thing. And I don't know. Now I kind of think the dark, the background could go a touch darker. So I'm going to go back and increase the opacity on the, the layer that was darkening things. And there, from before, after. All right. Now when I go totally before, after, it looks a little bit light on the bird. So let's uh, take that down in some areas here. So we'll just kind of take the tadpole down, maybe the back a little bit. It kind of looked cut out uh, when I was flicking that on and off, and I certainly don't want that. But uh, now the focus goes from the background to the bird, definitely a lot more. Uh, overall, I kind of just want to burn the, the far background just a little bit more, and then maybe just a touch of the foreground here. So that's yet another curves adjustment layer to kind of just roughly dodge and burn that. So there's before, after. Uh, the last thing I want to do is actually just really make that eye pop. So another curves layer, just going to increase contrast, paint that in just on that eye and the yellow there. Just really make that stand out. And uh, I'm actually going to desaturate the background uh, green here just a little bit so it's less obvious. And I really like, again, I mentioned the green there, so I'm actually going to enhance that green a little bit more. Oops, wrong way. And again, since I don't want to paint any of that green in on the hair in there, I actually have the selection already going, so I can load that right back up and then just paint some more green into that background. There we go. Now we have a really nice green scene. The hair is popping right out. That should do it. So, uh, merge all that down, save it, <clears throat> close that, hop back right into the Lightroom here, and I'll show you a complete before and after. So, here is the original image. I'm going to make a clone of that, and then revert it, just so we can see everything. And there you have it. Starting image on the left looks really bad now. Uh, pretty dull, underexposed, and then you got the finished image on the right. So quite a change on this one. Uh, it took a little bit more time than I normally do on most images, um, but I think it's worth it in the end. So there's the final.